future research, um, we, we need, in terms of clinical uh, application, we, we, we need to have um, uh, biomarkers so that we can predict it, the, uh, um, what is going on in the liver. So we, when we have new drugs with new model, novel mode of action, we need to, to know whether the, the, these uh, mode of actions are, are really uh, affecting the uh, reservoir of CCC DNA and improving the uh, um, uh, antiviral immune responses. Um, so biomarkers will be very important. So we need to have biomarkers to reflect uh, CCC DNA uh, in the liver. So, but, uh, and these biomarkers need to be non-invasive by, by just a blood test. So we know that there are um, different assays that are being uh, uh, evaluated, correlated antigen, uh, the CRAG, um, and uh, viral RNAs in, in serum. So they, they are, uh, there's a lot of excitement with these biomarkers. Now we, we need to learn from um, the ongoing studies, a lot of studies are, are being done, how to use them uh, and what is their, uh, 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 their meaning, their re clinical relevance. But we would also need to have um, biomarkers for, for immune responses or, or, or having assays that allow to, um, to measure the uh, uh, adaptive immune responses uh, to, to, to HBV infection. So, so these are very important in my, in, in my view to, to help the development of the new drugs. And in terms of basic science, uh, we need to, to, to develop uh, uh, more knowledge uh, to, that will be very important for drug discovery to, to really target CCC DNA uh, and try to either eliminate CCC DNA or make it completely inactive. Uh, so we really need to, to, to have a, a strong involvement in, uh, in research on CCC DNA biology and, and drug discovery to, to target CCC DNA. Uh, and this, the other point on, for the more mechanistic studies is really um, understanding the, uh, the, um, the pathways of um, T cell exhaustion to, so that we can uh, um, try to restore uh, a strong and uh, efficient adaptive immunity against the infected uh, hepatocytes. Uh, so that will be the very important points. So that's a very important question. I think the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the first step of clinical development is obviously to, to try to improve the, uh, uh, the efficacy uh, of the new, new, the new strategies compared to what is currently available. Uh, and clearly we need to go for chronic hepatitis patients. But it, the, the, uh, the long-term aim, the long-term goal is really to have strategies that will pr provide the uh, opportunity to, to achieve the functional cure in a large number of patients so that we can apply these strategies to treat all infected patients. To me, the long-term goal is to really treat all, all the uh, the carriers, um, so it's, and this could be possible if we, we achieve this high rate of functional cure, if we have a, a sh finite duration treatment, let's say short-term treatment. So short can be six months or a year, we, we don't know, but uh, if it's shorter, it's better, but let's say around six months to 12 months therapy um, instead of lifelong therapy. Uh, and then if it provides um, high cure rates, then we can treat everyone uh, to, to, to really prevent the, all the complications of, uh, of HBV, uh, liver cirrhosis, hepatocellular carcinoma. Uh, so that would be the, the long-term goal, and I think it would be very important to, to achieve this goal. Okay, so I, I've just covered the uh, new direct-acting antivirals, and uh, I think the, the way um, the field is evolving is really towards a, a combination trial. So monotherapy with, um, with um, uh, direct acting antiviral so far is not uh, a, a, an option uh, for two reasons. One is that um, uh, for most of these direct acting antivirals, for instance, capsid 
uh, assembly modulators or, um, uh, or, for instance, the new polymerase inhibitors that are uh, upcoming. Um, there is a risk of resistance, so, so we, we need really to, to combine uh, two modes of action to, to prevent resistance. Um, and the second reason is that uh, currently, and, and so far with all the data that we have from the different drugs uh, in, in clinical trials, we haven't seen um, a sufficient effect on, um, um, uh, on HBS antigen levels or on CCC DNA levels in the liver with uh, monotherapy. So we, clearly we need to go uh, for combination, either combination of direct acting antivirals or combination of antivirals plus immune, uh, immune um, strategies. Okay, so, so uh, thank you and um, hello uh, everyone. So um, regarding the, the new drugs that are in, um, uh, in development, there's a, a lot of um, excitement with um, uh, strategies that target um, viral RNAs um, and mainly antisense oligonucleotide, which are called ASO, and uh, siRNA. So we, we have seen very nice um, studies um, very recently uh, in, in, uh, in, in clinical trial, um, which show that with um, ASO or siRNA, um, with a sub subcutaneous uh, injection, we can induce HBS antigen uh, uh, decrease. Um, by approximately uh, two log, and that this uh, decrease may be may be sustained. Uh, so this is really uh, encouraging. And they, in these trials, they, they showed I mean different from different uh, companies, different regimen. But I, I'm giving the uh, overall message that uh, um, he, a few patients were even able to to clear HBS antigen, so to achieve a functional cure. So it, these are small trials, but still having a couple of patients in each trial that clear HBS is very promising. Uh, and um, uh, the decline in HBS antigen was uh, um, associated with uh, transient uh, transaminase elevation, um, which were very well tolerated, but we, which suggested that um, uh, this may be uh, associated with uh, restoration of uh, uh, antiviral immune responses. So, so clearly, I mean, there's a very big uh, enthusiasm with uh, antisense oligonucleotide and siRNA, and now the, these um, uh, drugs are now in, uh, evolving to uh, uh, late stage phase two clinical trials and even in phase three. So that may uh, that may start in you know in, in in a few months from now. So this is really really promising. Um, uh, and there are other drugs that are uh, um, uh, more at the exploratory stage, uh, such as uh, um, uh, capsid assembly modulators. Uh, there were big trials with the first generations of capsid assembly modulators, which were not very um, satisfactory. There was a modest um, modest uh, effect on HBS antigen, but now there are new generations of, uh, of capsid assembly modulators that are much more potent. So we, so the clinical development is, is starting again with a, with a new generation of capsid assembly modulators. So this, this looks very, um, very interesting. Uh, and there are also um, uh, novel uh, 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 HBV polymerase inhibitors that are starting also uh, 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 clinical clinical trials. So so very interesting um, a time with uh, direct acting antivirals, and there are also um, immune modulation uh, strategies that are being explored in clinical trials. So there are new therapeutic vaccines uh, with different type of vaccines that are explored, um, but they are mainly at early stage clinical development. But they are they will progress to to um, a larger phase two trial in combination with antisense oligonucleotide or siRNA. To, the concept will be to 
decrease HBS antigen level uh, with antisense or siRNA uh, uh, so that we, we can restore some uh, adaptive immunity and then come with a therapeutic vaccine. So the, this trials will start very soon during the year of 2022, this combination trial. So this will be very, very fascinating, uh, I think. And, and we have heard also from a, a Chinese group, uh, the, the uh, use in, um, uh, of a PDL1 uh, antibody, so a checkpoint inhibitor, which is not a PD1 uh, blockade, but a PDL1 blockade, um, which was um, uh, uh, shown recently uh, and very interesting uh, uh, results, small trial, but still, again, it was showing that in patients with uh, lower HBS, uh, less than 500, uh, then the uh, results with the PDL1 blockade were, was uh, much better. So very promising uh, uh, compounds, direct acting antivirals and immu immune modulatory approaches. <laughs>